shall we put our hands together for the Lord? For all the beautiful testimony we've heard this afternoon. Let's rise up. Let's appreciate God. Let's give thanks to Him. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us were not around last week? You were not here last week for the Growing Your Influence service. Raise up your hand. You really missed me. I hope that the tape department, they still have some of the recorded messages. I will want to encourage you to please get your own copy and listen to the messages. Praise the Lord. Uh, one or two announcements also. We announced to us last week that we have started broadcast on radio, internet radio, Destiny Radio. So we would like you to please um, join the multitude of people that are already logging on to that radio station to enjoy soul lifting music and messages. Uh, we, we are running 12 hours for now. But in a few weeks from now, we will go full blast to 24 hours. So all you need to do is just go to www.destinyradio.org and that you are on live. Or if you get to the website also, you could access the radio channel from there. And the beautiful thing about it is you can listen to it on almost all platforms, your Android, your tablet, your even China phones too, you can listen to it on it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then testimonies. I want to say this on testimonies. I believe that God is doing so much work in our midst. And one of the ways to encourage God to do more for us is to tell of his goodness. I know many of us are shy when it comes to standing before people to testify. But I just pray for you that uh, you won't compel God to force you to stand before people to weep. It's better for you to stand before people to testify, to sing about the goodness of the Lord than for you to stand before people to weep uh, pleading for their help. Let's cultivate the habit of returning the glory to God. And if it's so bad that you can't stand before people, you can send in your testimonies through the website. You have the e email address on your bulletin. At the back page, the bottom part of the back page, you, you find the email link there. Testimonies at destinyencounter.org. You can send in your testimonies. Let people read of what God has done in your life so that God can do more for you. I pray that God will grant us a heart of understanding. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Also put to mind that 2nd of July we'll have the third quarter anointing service, the anointing service for the third quarter of the year. And the theme is thou shalt find There is a little error in the advert on your bulletin. Because it's an anointing service, it will start at 11 so that we will have enough time to attend to everybody. Please keep that in mind. Then don't forget that the big one for this quarter is the Abuja Destiny Encounter service. And it's coming on the 13th of July. If you are clapping, clap. If you don't want to clap, drop your hands. 13th of July at 4.30 p.m. at this day dome. It is not going to be an all-night service. It's just an evening service. Please plan towards that. And the Lord will bless you as you prepare for it in Jesus' name. Our Lord God, Thou who hast made the heavens and the earth by Thy great power. Our Lord God, Thou who hast made the heavens and the earth by Thine outstretched arms. 
Nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Great and mighty God, great in counsel and mighty in deed, mighty in deed. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is too difficult. Let's sing it again. Our oh, Lord God. chapter 32, verse 17 and 19. Jeremiah 32, 17 and 19. Or you can read 17 through 19. Our theme for today's meeting is great in counsel. Great in counsel. Are we there? Now can we read together before we sing together? At the count of two. One, two, go. We'll start over again. One, two, go. Are we reading? Now we'll start over again. Some people don't have their Bibles here. And I've caught some of them. So those of you standing without your Bible, you are going to get us projector with software that will be projecting scriptures on the screen here. Sister Angela, you, you, you coordinate that group. By this time next week, I need it in place. So how many of us are here without our Bibles? Raise up your hand so that you know which group you belong. Now all of you, come out, come out, come out. I'm serious about it. Come out, come out. All of you, come, come. I've already appointed you. All of them, come, come, come. Don't stay back. Just come. Just come. In any case, once I hold one, two, three, uh, okay. I've seen all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, you form a good group. By this time next week, where is Shola Kondi? Yeah, come and talk with them. Where is Shegun? ICT, where are you? Is he around? Or oh, Jerry? Which of them is around? Okay. Now the two of them will tell them what it entails and then plan with them, work with them. By this time, next week, we should have the projectors, we should have the screen, and then we should have the system that will project the scriptures on the screen. So Sister Angela, Brokari Odeon Motosho, the two of you will coordinate the group. God bless. Let's put our hands together for them. Wonderful people. You better meet with them or they are hold the two of you responsible. So, church, let's clap our hands for them again. Next week, Thursday, we'll have it. It's a done deal. Praise the Lord. The way Bro Brown is looking at me, you want to join that group. I had you to the group. And the person tapping you beside you, I had you to the group too. Praise God. Now can we read together Jeremiah 32, 17 to 19. One, two, go. 
You didn't say that ah very well. It's an exclamation. Hello, hello, hello. Are there punctuation marks in your Bible? If there are, then you should follow the punctuation. So let's start all over again. One, two, go. So we'll sing that song now. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy outstretched arm. There is nothing, nothing is to do become for me. you are great in counsel. You have no need that anyone should instruct you. By your power, you do all things. Father, today, every issue of my life that I've brought before your throne, let it not be difficult for you to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, attend to me speedily. Show forth your power in my life. In the name of Jesus, 
Open your mouth and pray to him. Open your mouth and pray to him. Open your mouth and pray to him. If God's power didn't fail when he was creating the, the whole universe, it wouldn't be over your own life that his power will fail. If God's counsel didn't fail when he was putting together the entire universe, it's not in your own case that his counsel will fail. He is great in counsel. He is mighty in works. I want you to pray to him and say, Father, every issue of my life that I brought before you today, let it not be difficult. Let it not be difficult. Father, please attend to them. In the name of Jesus, pray to him. I may not know what you have brought before his presence. I may not know the challenges. I may not know the problems. But I do know that God has power enough to handle the problem. I do know that God's counsel can accommodate it. I do know that God's strength can take care of it. I want you to pray to him. He said, Father, please, every issue that I brought before you, Lord, let your power be made manifest over it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I said, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And I want to pray for you that in his almightiness, every challenge that you have brought before his presence today, the Lord will speedily attend to it in the name of Jesus. It will demonstrate his power in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Counsel could mean opinion. So when we say God is great in counsel, we're saying he's great in opinion. There can't be any other opinion that will be stronger than his own opinion. I wouldn't know the different opinions that people have given to you concerning that problem. Experts may have given you their own opinion, but there is an opinion that supersedes all other opinions because God is great in counsel. You are going to pray to God and say, Father, I can't just say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I drop all opinions of men that have spoken negatives concerning my case, concerning my situation. I drop the opinions of men. I embrace your own opinion, your great counsel. I embrace it today. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray to God. Open your mouth and pray to God. Whatever the opinion of men concerning you, Whatever the conclusion of men concerning you, whatever they have said concerning that situation, every unpleasant thing they have told you, every negative thing they have told you, that is the counsel of men. That is the opinion of men. The opinion of God is stronger, is higher. I want you to pray to him and say, Father, I drop the opinion of men at your feet. I embrace your own opinion. I know that the thoughts you think towards me, they are thoughts of good and not of evil. I embrace your opinion. I embrace it. I embrace it. I embrace it. In the name of Jesus. Your report alone is what I go by. I choose not to go with the report of man. Man did not create me. There was no man there when you were putting me together in the womb of my mother. Man did not write my destiny. No man was there when you were setting my life in place. No man was there when you determined the ending even before the beginning started. Therefore, I choose to drop the opinion of men. No matter how strong the opinion may have been on my mind, I choose to drop it today. I embrace your own opinion. I embrace your own counsel. I embrace your own submission. I embrace your conclusion. In the name of Jesus.
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And I want to stand in agreement with you that every opinion of man in your life that have led to a negative report, I decree today that as you embrace the counsel of the Lord, the Lord will destroy the opinion of men over your life. The counsel of men over your life shall come to naught. In the mighty name of Jesus, those negative conclusions, the Lord will reduce them to zero. In the mighty name of Jesus, his own counsel alone will stand in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, so shall it be for you. In Jesus' name we pray. One more prayer point if you are not tired of praying. Another meaning of counsel is deliberate purpose. I want you to pray. It's not unlikely that there were things men proposed for your life that for some reason have found fulfillment in you. Different from God's purpose for your life. You want to pray to God today because God has brought you under the influence of his own purpose. You want to pray that God will terminate every purpose of man that negates his own purpose in your life. That God will put an end to it today in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Lift up your hands to him and say, Father, I can say, Father, Father, you are the writer of my destiny. You are the designer of my life. Any purpose of man that negates your own purpose for my life, that has found its way into my destiny, Father, terminate it today. In the name of Jesus, bring an end to it today. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Everything man has proposed, contrary to God's purpose for your life, Contrary to God's purpose for your home, that has found its way into your life, found its way into your destiny, that is now being fulfilled in your life, as that the Lord will pick, bring an end to it, that God will terminate it in your life, in the name of Jesus. I wish we will pray better than we, we're doing. The purpose of man will always lead you short of God's expectation. Pray to God and say, Father, let the purpose of man that negates your own purpose in my life, but has found its way into my existence. Father, let it come to an end today. 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 In the name of Jesus. Every purpose of man, every purpose of man in any of his manifestation, as long as it negates your own purpose for my life, Father, let an end come to you today. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. If you stretch forth your two hands towards me, towards the altar, I want to make this declaration over your life. In any way, the plan, the thoughts, the counsel, the will, the purpose of man has crept into your life, contrary to God's own purpose, to God's own plan, to God's own thoughts for your life. Because you are here this afternoon, and because you have declared that you know that God is great in counsel, I decree from this altar, an end comes to the counsel of man in your life. An end comes to the thoughts of man in your life. An end comes to the purpose of man in your life. In the name of Jesus, everything that originated from man, contrary to God's plan for your life, I decree an end to it in your life today. I said I decree an end to it in your life today. I said I decree an end to it in your life today. I said I decree an end to it in your life today. I said I decree an end to it in your life today. In the name of Jesus.
It doesn't matter how they have orchestrated it. It doesn't matter how carefully they have planted it into your life. It doesn't matter how carefully they have superimposed it upon your destiny. I stand as God's servant under the influence of today's word that their counsel, their thoughts, their purpose, their will in your life is annulled in the name of Jesus. If you can say better, amen, it is annulled in the name of Jesus. 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 And I declare that only the counsel of the Lord will stand in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give glory to you. Speak your word to us. Bless us in the word. Change our lives. Give every one of us a new song to sing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. May please be seated. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20 and 21. Proverbs 19, 20 to 21. I welcome all the ministers of God again to the house. And especially our pastor, all the way from Ibadan. Pastor Lyson, God bless you. After a long time, the sabbatical is over. You're welcome back. God bless you, sir. Proverbs 19, 20 to 21. Now, where we read in Jeremiah 32, verse 17 to 19, tells us that God is great in counsel. Jeremiah considered the works of the hands of the Lord. He found himself in a situation, and then he took the time to reflect on the works the, the hands of the Lord had done. And then he suddenly came to the discovery that the counsel of God is just too big. For any situation to make a mess of it. So he said, God, you are great in counsel and you are mighty in works. If by your counsel you created everything that now is, then that counsel is great. If the counsel of God didn't fail him when he was creating everything he created, it wouldn't be over any of the creations that that counsel will fail. The counsel that could put the whole universe together will not fail over one component of that universe. And that's why I know today that every situation you are going through, that the counsel of the Lord will accommodate it in it. And God will give you a way out of it in the mighty name of Jesus. Proverbs 19, 20 to 21. The Bible says there, hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. He says, there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. Life is full of riddles. Life is full of problems. But the solution, the answer to the riddles of life and the problems of life lies with God. If you are looking for the solution to the riddles of life outside of God, you will run into more riddles, you will run into more problems. It's only in God we find answers to the riddles of life. God has his counsel concerning every situation in life. He has his counsel. There is nothing that is happening on the face of the earth that God doesn't have his counsel over it. Everything. You see that that thing is happening according to the counsel of the Lord, or it is happening contrary to his counsel. But God has his counsel concerning every situation of life. He has his opinion. The situation you are going through, God has his own opinion about it. He has his counsel concerning it. Is it that you align yourself to the counsel of God and things happen to you according to his counsel? Or you dissociate yourself from his counsel and then things happen to you contrary to his counsel. But that will still not take the fact away that God has a counsel. God is mindful of you. At least I know that God is mindful of me. Every situation of my life, God is mindful of it. And he has a counsel concerning it. 
And that's why it is good for us to always seek for God's counsel. Don't just go for good counsels. Go for God's counsel. Because God's counsel, the Bible says, is the only thing that will stand. Every other counsel will fail. At some point, the counsel of man will fail. Because man will ever be man. But the counsel of God will forever stand. I'm praying for somebody again this morning that every counsel of man that is capable of leading you to a dead end, before it takes you to that dead end, the Lord will kill that counsel in you in the name of Jesus. And his own counsel that will take you to his destined place for you, you will embrace it today in the mighty name of Jesus. Together, the God of the world and the word of God works out his counsel. God teams up with his word to work out his counsel concerning our lives. That Proverbs 19.21 we read, Proverbs 19.21, according to the message translation, and I love the way the message translation puts it. It says, we humans keep brainstorming options and plans. Any little thing we want to do, we want to go to the round table. Let's go and brainstorm. Let's go and think. We we'll put together a think tank team. Let's brainstorm. Let's come up with ideas, things we need to do. It's good. But the Bible says that we keep brainstorming options and plan, but God's purpose prevails. It's the purpose of God that prevails. So instead of wasting time brainstorming, why can't we just go to God to ask for his purpose? Because the only thing that will stand at the end of the day is the purpose and the counsel of the Lord. In the book of Isaiah 55, verse 11, Isaiah 55, verse 11, God says, so shall my words be that goes forth out of my mouth. He says, it shall not return to me empty. It will return empty. The moment God's counsel goes forth, it goes forth to go and accomplish a purpose. And it will never return to him empty until that purpose has been accomplished. I pray for you that the counsel you need, the word you need, the instruction you need, the leading you need to take you to the place of fulfillment in life, may you receive it on a daily basis from the Lord. I said, may you receive it on a daily basis from the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now when you read Proverbs 15 verse 22, the Bible tells us the importance of counsel. Godly counsel. The Bible says that where there are no counsel or without counsel, purposes are disappointed. How many of us have proposed something and we were disappointed at the end of the day? I'm sure you have many instances when that have happened to you because you didn't lean on the counsel of God. Many times that has happened to me too because I didn't lean on the counsel of God. But if we can lean on God's counsel, no matter the purpose, no matter how difficult it may look, seem, God's power in his counsel will help us to succeed with it. And I pray for us again that the counsel you need for your purpose in life never to be disappointed. May the Lord give to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now what counsel does is it, it enlarges our perspective. It enlarges our perspective. When you are trying to do something and then you don't know how to do it, and somebody gives you a word of counsel, the person is like expanding your mind. The person is like adding his own mind to your own mind. What your mind couldn't think before, your mind can now reason it out because somebody else has lent you his own mind. So counsel enlarges our perspective. Now you can now imagine when it is God's counsel that enters into your heart. Your perspective enlarges so wide that there is nothing in life that could stop you from achieving your purpose in life. In Ezekiel 37, is a scripture we all know very well, the value of dry bones. Ezekiel found himself in the value of the dry bones. And God asked him a question. God said to him, son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel looked at it. 
going by his own mind, those bones could never live again. So he said to God, I don't want to say it out, but you can read my thoughts. But I know that there is a counsel on your mind concerning this thing. Borrow me your counsel. And God said, all right, since you have said only I know, I will give you counsel. I will teach you how dry bones can live again. So God said to him, prophesy, son of man. That's counsel. Say, prophesy to the winds. Prophesy to the earth. God gave him his counsel, and then he acted upon the counsel of God, and what he thought couldn't happen, suddenly happened, because his mind was enlarged by the counsel of the Lord. May I pray for somebody here, that from this day forward, when it comes to the issues of life, where you need to take vital decision, the Lord will give you his mind to reason with in the name of Jesus. I said God will give you his mind in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Counsel from God gives us the mind of God. He gives us the mind of God. That's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16, the Bible says, For who had known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? He said, but we have the mind. How do we have the mind of Christ? Because of the counsel, because of the instruction of Christ in our hearts, because of the words of Christ in our hearts. You can't separate the words of a man from his mind. Out of the mind proceeded words. So the words of a man shows you the state of his mind. In fact, if you are trying to define the mind of a man, listen to his words. His words will show you what his mind looks like. So, he says, who had known the mind of the Lord will get to know his mind when we take his counsel. When we take his counsel. I'm praying for us today that every time we need to take decisions, and you know decisions are what we do every day. Every time you need to take a decision, God's mind will be made available to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Never argue with God's counsel no matter how illogical it may sound. Never argue with, argue with him. You know why? Because God had purposed it. He's just telling you what is going to be. So there's no point arguing with a man that knows what is going to be. A man that knows the outcome, you don't argue with him. You don't go to the law court and then you start arguing with the judge. Before he leaves home, he decides who wins the case. It's not what the lawyers, what they call legal counsels or whatever they call them. It's not what they will say in court that will determine the judgment. Is, it, most of them have written the judgment before they leave home. They've decided on it. So they just go to court and people just say all sorts of things. After they are finished, those of you who have been observant, as they are talking, he's writing. Don't be tempted to think he's listening to them. He's just putting down his thoughts. Praise the Lord. He's putting down his thoughts. So don't argue with God's counsel. In John chapter 2, at the marriage feast in Canaan of Galilee, the people ran out of wine, and then they went to Mary, the mother of Jesus, and they said to her, we've run out of wine. And Mary goes to Jesus and says to him, they don't have wine anymore. And Jesus says, what, what, what have I got to do with that? My hour has not yet come. And Mary goes back to the people and tells them, anything he says, do. In other words, I know he will speak because he has determined the ending of this matter before the beginning started. I know he's going to speak, but let me give you a warning. Whatever he tells you to do, don't argue with it. If Mary hadn't told them that, when they got to Jesus, and Jesus said to them, go and fill the water pot with water. They would have said, oh God, we ask you for wine. What is the correlation between wine? But they remembered what she told them. And they just went. It, it, it looked stupid. 
But at the end of the day, the end that Jesus had in mind before the problem started, manifested. I don't know the problem you are going through, but God already had determined how you are going to get out of that problem. I, I didn't pray. I made a statement of fact. God already had determined it. So you need to go to God to ask him, how do I get myself out of this situation? And the moment he gives you counsel, follow through with it. That's the widow of the, the son of one of the prophets. They were in debt. Grossly indebted. The creditors have come to take their children. And then the servant of God said, go and borrow more. Somebody came to him that I'm owing so much and the creditor is here to take my sons from me. He said the solution to your problem is go and borrow more. What would you say to him? You say, now I know you are a fake man of God. Or maybe you say, maybe he's here. Maybe he didn't hear me very well. He, it, it sounded stupid. But that was God's counsel. Go and borrow more. Sometimes God tells us to do some strange things. God says to you, for instance, oh, you are trusting him for your child. Go out and go and shop for your baby things. And you say, how am I going to do that? People will see me and laugh at me. You are still leaning on the counsel of men. You are ignoring the counsel of God. There are people that have taken God at his words and they did it and God proved himself faithful in their lives. Sometimes they say to you, give the last you have on you. They say, oh, those people, they have come again. They want to empty all our pockets. Nobody is forcing you to apply your heart to what they have said, but God's counsel will go forth. And everyone that takes God's counsel to heart will enjoy the product of that counsel. Never argue with God's counsel, even when it doesn't seem logical to you. In any case, you are man, and God is God. If you and God begin to think alike, then something is wrong. He says his thoughts are far from our thoughts. His ways are far higher than our ways. Don't argue with it. Because I know at the end of this meeting, we may not pray for demons to fall, but at the end of this meeting, God will begin to give us counsels. God will begin to give us instruction in anything we do. If you can apply your heart to it, you will see the result of it. And I know that very soon there will be multiple testimonies in the house. People that will come to say, God told me to do this and I did it. And the, the result was amazing. So shall it be for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Proverbs 21 verse 30 says, There is no wisdom and no understanding and no counsel against the Lord. Proverbs 21 verse 30. There is no wisdom, no understanding, and no counsel against the Lord. You better hear this and hear it well. God never loses. No, 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 no. God always wins. He never loses. So if you can tag with him, you can be sure you're on the winning side. Always you can be on the winning side if you can tag with him. God always wins because he determines the ending before the beginning. That's why he cannot lose. He cannot lose. There's hardly anyone amongst us here that can set the ending from the beginning. You can't. You don't have the power to do it. Even the beginning, you don't have the power to set it. Except God empowers you to set the beginning. But God determines the ending before the beginning commences. So how will he fail? How will he fail? Have you ever seen a graphic artist before that, and you want to fault his work? You can't fault his work. If he makes a mistake, he will explain the mistake to you. He will tell you this is what this means, even though it was a mistake. Praise the Lord. That's this, this, the same way it is with God. Uh, so Mary said to them, never argue with him. I'm going to read a scripture and then we will do something that God said we should do. And that's Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. Human wisdom is no match against God's wisdom. The wisest of all men is a fool when he stands beside God. He's a fool. 
There is no wisdom or plans of any man that can accurately or ultimately lead you to your desired end. Only God's will. Joshua chapter 6. Joshua 6. Are we there? Verse 2 to 5. I'm sure you know the story. The children of Israel, on their way into the promised land, they were confronted by the walls of Jericho. They were to go in to take possession of Jericho, but the walls were so intimidating. You can imagine people that left Egypt without any weapons of warfare. And they have walked in the wilderness many years. Many of them, are, they are worn out, they are tired. And then they came against that strong obstacle. And while they were thinking of what to do, God said to them, don't trouble yourself. Just march around the walls. One time, each day, for six days, without saying a word. Many of us would think that was an easy thing to do. We're not talking about the perimeter of your house. We're talking about the perimeter of a city. Even some of us to walk around the perimeter of our houses, because most times we clean only the inside. Whatever happens behind your fence, you don't care. There probably will be stones. There probably will be broken bottles. There probably will be decaying objects and all of that. And God said to them, march round it without saying a word. The army of Jericho were also there on the wall with their arrows positioned. And God says, don't say a word. How many of us can do that? How many of us? And God said, do that. The whole nation going around the city once in a day for six days. And then God said, on the seventh day, you are to go around it seven times. And after that, give a loud shout. Nobody has ever read anything like that in history. That people ever won a battle that way. And they were not there when God was speaking to Joshua. So Joshua stands the way I'm standing before you. And he says to all of you, stand to your feet. And I'm talking to you now, stand to your feet. And, I, and he says to you, remove all your dresses. Ha. Error. Or oh, I say to you, drop your bags and then leave this place never to come back for your bags. Second error. They were not there. Joshua only came to tell them, thus said the Lord. Let's march around the wall of Jericho one time each day for six days without saying a word. But guess what? All of them, without anybody raising any objection, followed him. All of them. If only we can have that kind of a heart of obedience to the word of God. Wonders will not be scarce in our lives. But you know what we do most of the time? We want to rationalize. So, okay, what is the what is the wisdom in what this man is asking us to do? Because you are very wise. And if you are very wise, you won't be where you are. You'll have gone far from where you are. And God said they should make just one shout. And while I was praying, God said to me that we'll shout hallelujah four times. I asked God, why four? He said, because four is the number of the earth. There are four cardinal points on earth. You have the north, you have the south, you have the east, you have the west. There are four seasons in life. Four seasons. Everything about the earth is four. And God said when we shout it, anywhere on the face of the earth, where there is anything that is standing against you, against your rising, against your glory, against your destiny, that as we shout the hallelujah four times, the same way the walls of Jericho came crumbling down, that those things will come crumbling down. 
So we're standing, we're going to do that very soon. I'll read one scripture and then we'll do that. Meanwhile, you know you are here this morning, you have not given your life to Jesus. You are not so sure of your salvation. Nothing will happen to you if you don't come out. It's just that the counsel of God will not find fulfillment in your life. You might shout with us, even to the point of losing your voice, but God will not honor his words in those that disobey him. He will honor his words only in those that honor him. He said, those that honor me, I will honor. And those that despise me, I will lightly esteem them. You know you are here this morning, you have not given your life to Jesus, and you want to surrender your life to him. As I'm reading this next passage, because after that we're going to do the shouting, and after the shouting we are done for the day. And then we'll wait to see what God will do and the testimonies that will follow. And when God says to you, I am God, then you know that is critical. When God gets to a point and he says to you, I am the Lord, what that means is you are acting as if you don't know who I am. You don't know who I am. You are there this morning. You have not surrendered your life to Jesus. Please start coming. Start coming. I read Isaiah chapter 46, verse 8 to 11. Isaiah 46, 8 to 11. Maybe we'll read together. Isaiah 46, 8 to 11. Those of us who are coming out, please come out. You are not here by accident. I'm sure that God brought you here for that purpose. Isaiah 46, 8 to 11. Can we read together? Are we there? All right. One, two, go. He says, I have spoken and I will bring it to pass. I have purposed and I will do it. What you are about to do is an act in faith. What you are about to do is taking God's mind and acting on his mind. Some of us know some things that are standing against us. Some of us know things that are fighting against our glory. Some of us know some things that we are contending with. Keep them in mind as we shout this hallelujah four times. And then watch to see what God is going to do. I want us to close our eyes. Close your eyes. Raise up your two hands to the heavens. And I'm just going to repeat that call. There are 22 people that are about forfeiting a lifetime opportunity. A lifetime opportunity. A lifetime opportunity. If you miss it here and now, you may never again get it in life. You may forever continue to struggle with that problem because you despise God. 22 people you know your spirit says to you go and surrender your life to Jesus it means you are one of the 22 you may have been going to church but you know it yourself that I have never made that conscious decision with seriousness and you are one of the people that God has counted in the 22 I will give you just one minute to come out if you are not out, we'll continue with what God will want us to do. 
But know it, that that problem, that trouble that you wished God will take away from you may forever remain with you. May forever remain with you. I hear God say to me clearly, 22 people are about to forfeit a lifetime opportunity. 22 of you. 22. Because we won't wait for you forever, I will just count from one to five. Once I count up to five, ushers, anybody that is coming, let the person go back. If the person is not out before I finish counting up to five, let the person go back. One. Two. Three. Four. We all have things to do in our offices, so nobody should tie us down. Life is about choices, and every choice has its own consequence. It's about choices. 22, the Lord told me, 22, 22, 22, I've counted four already, your blood won't be in my hands, your blood will be on your own head, when the groaning will begin. when the troubles will aggravate and you will cry for help, you will go from one prayer house to the other and you don't get solution to the problem. Those that honor God, the Lord will honor. Those that despise him, he will likely esteem them. Now the rest of us, let's lift up our hands to God. Lift up your hands to God. Those of us who have come to the front, I want you to just pray to him and say, Father, I've come to you today to genuinely and sincerely surrender my life to you. I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my life. Turn everything around according to your purpose, according to your counsel, and according to your will, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to thank you for this, your children. Out of the number you called, you prepared for, these ones have come out to yield their lives unto you. I pray, O God of heavens, that because they have honored you, that you will honor them with the garment of salvation, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you will turn everything around in their lives according to your counsel, in the mighty name of Jesus, that from today they would live as your children and you will give them the kingdom power that will connect them to the kingdom resources in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. We give all the glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, you will stay where you are while we all do the shouting together. Are we ready? Lift up your two hands to God. Like I said, please keep in view those challenges that you know. Leave the ones you don't know for God to handle. The ones you know, keep them in view. Keep them in view. Keep them in view. Keep them in view. There's someone here, there is this big, major breakthrough that you have expected for some time now. And it has just delayed in coming. The Lord said, I should say to you, give me a testimony offering on that breakthrough. I don't know who you are. I don't know how big that breakthrough is. But God says, give me a testimony offering as if you have come to testify that I have done it. Now, every one of us, let's lift our hands to God. I will pray. And then once I say to us, shout, 
we'll all shout hallelujah four times and then any other prayer you want to pray you can pray after that father i thank you because you've given grace to me today to declare your counsel thank you father because of the ability you have given to me to release your word as you have placed it in my mouth Lord, I have told your children all that you asked me to tell them. Lord, I have shown them all you asked me to show them. And I've also given to them the divine instruction that you have given us for today. My Lord and my Father, I'm asking as you have done in the time past that you always honored your counsel, the words of your counsel. You honored it in the valley of the dry bones you honored it at the marriage feast in canaan of galilee you honored it in several places where you replicated miracles i'm asking my lord and my father that in the lives of your children as they act in faith please honor the words of your counsel in the name of jesus for those who are here with us and those who have joined us via the social media platform, those who are watching us also via the internet streaming, or those who are listening to us via the radio, the Destiny Radio, Father, we ask that everything in their lives that have stood in opposition to your own counsel, to your own plan and purpose for them, that as they act in faith today, Father, please bring those things down in the name of Jesus. On that day that you brought your counsel to fulfillment in the lives of the children of Israel, when they stood outside the walls of Jericho, that same day they entered in and they took possession of their glory. I pray for all these, your children, that today, not tomorrow, before today is over, you will cause every wall that have hidden their glory away to fall down, and you enable them to go in to lay hold on the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything in manifestation in your life, contrary to the will and the counsel and the purpose of God for you, as you act in faith upon this divine instruction, the power of the Lord will bring them down in you in the name of Jesus. Everything you have stretched forth your hands to get and you have not been able to reach, I pray that as you act in faith upon this divine instruction, that the all hand of the Almighty God will elongate your hands to reach it in the name of Jesus. Wherever upon the face of the earth, wherever within this sphere called the universe, that anything may be standing, walking, speaking, acting against God's plan and purpose and counsel for your life. As you act on this instruction, they shall utterly be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Things that have been difficult for you before now, after today, with ease you will begin to do them in the name of Jesus. I said with ease we begin to do them in the name of Jesus. I said with ease we begin to do them in the name of Jesus. Father, let the emissaries of heavens be released right now. Your angels that do your bidding, let them be released right now. In the name of Jesus. As your people shout now, Father, please establish your counsel. Fulfill your purpose. Deliver on your promises in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now shout! Two!
to Jesus. You can go ahead and give thanks to him. Go ahead and give thanks to him. Those of us who are in front, if you look towards your right, somebody will quickly attend to you.